Hello and good morning, Junior Ranger Cub. Right now is a great time to go ahead and use the restroom or grab a glass of water before we get started at nine o'clock. All right, hello and good morning, all our wonderful Junior Ranger Cubs. My name is Kat and I am an interpreter with the California State Parks. And today you're visiting McCarricker State Park in Mendocino County in California. Let me pull up a very quick map so you get a really good idea of what part of California you're in today. Here we go, here's our California, and we are way up here in Mendocino. As you can see, our parks out here are right on the ocean, and the ocean is exactly what we will be talking about today. Now, if at any point you need to get up or go use the restroom, grab a glass of water, please feel free to do so. And through this Junior Ranger program, after this, you'll be prompted to take a survey, and that's how you are gonna get your Junior Ranger badge for today. Now, what we're doing is we are going to read our book, The Snail and the Whale, and I promise we'll also talk about this big old skeleton behind me. Now, before we really get started, let's go ahead and we are gonna take our Junior Ranger Pledge. This is a repeat after me. Are you ready? I, fill in your name, I promise to treat the earth and all living things with care and respect. Promise to treat the earth with all living things with care and respect. Be thoughtful about what I do and how it affects others. Be thoughtful about what I do and how it affects others. And learn about the importance of nature and our heritage. 
learn about the importance of nature and our heritage. All right, great job, everyone. Now, like I mentioned today, we are gonna read a really fun book called The Snail and the Whale. This lesson's gonna be about 30 minutes. No, we've already done our Junior Ranger pledge. I have one final challenge for you before we really dive into this book. In this book, is the creature that this skeleton is. So as we're reading this book, I want you to keep your eyes open and your ears open for what character you think this skeleton might be. This book is fun because it teaches us about how, even though sometimes we might feel small, we all can make a really big difference. Let's go ahead, we're gonna use our raise hand button as a, I am ready to read this book. Raise your hand if you're ready. Wonderful, you all found that raise hand button very quickly. This is a smart group. All right, so, The Snail and the Whale by Julia Donaldson and Axel Scheffler. I'm gonna read a page and I promise I will show you the beautiful pictures in this book. All right. This is the tale of a tiny snail and a great big gray blue humpback whale. Now this is a rock as black as soot and this is a snail with an itchy foot. The sea snail slithered all over the rock and gazed at the sea and the ships in the dock. As she gazed, she sniffed and sighed. The sea is deep and the world is wide. How I long to sail, said the tiny snail. All the ships in the dock, and if you look really close, oh, there are snails. These are the other snails in the flock who all stuck tight to the smooth black rock and said to the snail with an itchy foot, be quiet, don't wiggle, sit still, stay put. But the tiny sea snail sniffed and sighed then cried, I've got it, I'll hitch a ride. This is the trail of the tiny snail, a silvery trail that looped and curled and said, ride wanted around the world. This is the whale who came one night when the tide was high and the stars were bright, a humpback whale immensely long, who sang to the snail a wonderful song of shimmering ice and coral caves and shooting stars and enormous waves. And this is the tale of the humpback whale. He held it out of the starlit sea and said to the snail, come sail with me. Here's our big gray blue humpback whale. Oh, and there's our little friend, the snail. This is the sea, so wild and free, that carried the whale and the snail on his tail to towering icebergs and far off lands. with fiery mountains and golden sands. Now if you look really close, oh, there's our friend the snail.
these are the waves that arched and crashed, that foamed and frolicked and sprayed and splashed the tiny snail on the tail of a whale. These are the caves beneath the waves where colorful fish with feathery fins and sharks with gloriously toothy grins swam past the whale and the snail on his tail. Oh, there's those pretty toothy grins. This is the sky, so vast and high, sometimes sunny and blue and warm, sometimes filled with a thunderstorm, with zigzag lightning flashing and frightening the tiny snail on the tail of a whale. Sorry about that, guys. There we go. Ooh, thunderstorms can be scary sometimes. As she gazed at the sky, the sea, the land, the waves and the caves and the golden sand, she gazed and gazed amazed by it all. And she said to the whale, I feel so small. Then came the day, the whale lost his way. There were speedboats running a race, zigging and zooming all over the place, upsetting the whale with an ear-splitting roar, making him swim too close to shore. Mm. This is the tide slipping away. Oh. And this is the whale lying beached in the bay. Quick, off the sand, back to sea, cried the snail. I can't move on land. I'm too big, moaned the whale. The snail felt helpless and terribly small. Then, I've got it she cried, and she started to crawl. I must not fail, said the tiny snail. Uh-oh, that doesn't look good for the whale. This is the bell on the school in the bay, ringing the children in from their play. And this is the teacher holding her chalk, telling the cast, sit straight, don't talk. And this is the board, as black as sight, and this is the snail with an itchy foot. A snail, a snail, the teacher turns pale. Look, say the children. It's leaving a trail. This is the trail of the tiny snail, a silvery trail saying, save the whale. <coughs> These are the children running from school, fetching the firemen, digging a pool. squirting and spraying to keep the whale cool. This is the tide coming into the bay. And these are the villagers shouting hooray as the whale and the snail travel safely away. 
back to the dock and the flock on the rock who said, how time's flown and haven't you grown? And the whale and the snail told their wonderful tale of shimmering ice and coral caves and shooting stars and enormous waves and of how the snail, so small and frail, with her looping, curling, silvery trail, saved the life of the humpback whale. Then the humpback whale held out his tail and on crawled snail after snail after snail. And they sang to the sea as they all set sail on the tail of a gray blue humpback whale. The end. So again, that story was The Snail and the Whale by Julia Donaldson and Axel Scheffler. Now, there's a lot of things we can take from this story about how far whales can travel, how they saw both the Arctic and those golden shimmering sands, but also how an animal, that little tiny snail, saved an animal as big as a whale. Now, I gave you a challenge before we read this book to try to figure out based on this book I'm reading, what kind of animal skeleton is behind me? Go ahead and use that raise hand button if you think you know what animal skeleton is behind me. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. It seems like I have a very smart, very confident group of junior ranger cubs. If you thought that the skeleton behind me was a whale, you are absolutely right. So this huge, beautiful animal, whales, we can see off the coast of California all year long. But not only that, whales live in every single ocean on our planet. Did you know that? Now whales are really, really big. You know, I'm gonna take a step back so you can see how big these animals really are. <laughs> Whoa, it's huge. Now, I'm the size of a human. I'm not quite as small as a snail. And I still feel small next to a whale. Imagine how small that snail must have felt. Hmm. Now, sometimes it's, it's pretty easy for humans to feel small. I know I feel small standing next to a whale or looking up at a really tall tree. Let's use that raise hand button. Have you ever felt small before? I, I'll raise my hand. Yeah. We live in a big old world with lots of other humans and lots of really huge animals like horses and elephants and giraffes. There's lots of big animals. Sometimes it's easy to feel small. But from what we learned from the snail in our story is that even though we might feel small sometimes just like she did, we can still save something that is so much bigger than we are. There's a couple of easy ways we can do that. Hmm. If you can think of a way that we can help the really, really big stuff all over our planet. Go ahead and raise your hand. Let's see if we can think of the same kinds of things that we can do, even though we might feel small sometimes. I'll let you keep looking at this great skeleton. Let's think. Even though we feel small sometimes, 
or we're not quite as big as these creatures, how do we help them? That's a big question too. Well, let's see if we got some similar answers. Well, these whales live in the ocean. How do we protect their home? Today, I woke up and recycled something that was in my house. So I, I recycled, that's good, because that means that that plastic or metal might not end up in the ocean. It might not end up in the belly of a big old whale. Hmm. I bet not just recycling, I bet I could reduce how much trash I create. I could reuse the items I already have laying around. Did you know there's actually a fourth R in our reduce, reuse, recycling? I can refuse. Yeah, we can refuse to use plastic items. We can say, no, thank you. I'll use something reusable. And that's a good way to protect our ocean, just like how that little snail saved a big old whale. Even though we're a lot smaller, we can still make a big difference because whales are, well, they're just like us. Do you know that? I can prove it on the count of three. I want you to point to a mammal. Hmm, it's all right if we don't know exactly what a mammal is, we'll go over that. But I want you to try to point, let's take a guess, on the count of three, point to a mammal. One, two, three, point. Yeah, all of us are mammals. Even though the whale is really, really big, they're a mammal just like humans and cats and dogs and hamsters and guinea pigs and horses. We're all mammals. So we have five big mammal characteristics in common, five big things that bring us together as mammals. The first thing is that we all have hair. We all have hair, all mammals. Where do you think a whale has hair? Hmm. Well, they don't have it quite on the tippy top of their head like we do, no. Let me pull out my friend so I can show you. Whales have hair right here, and they look almost like whisker. This part of a whale is called a rostrum, it's a big word. But they have hair, just like us. So we all have hair. Number two, we all, I hope you're all doing it right now, we all breathe air. Even this big old animal that lives in the ocean, whales breathe air through a blowhole right on the top of their head, right here. So they have to come up to the surface to breathe. So we all have hair, we all breathe air. Number three, we all maintain our own body temperature or we're all warm blooded. So whales aren't quite like fish that are cold blooded. No, whales need to stay warm in the ocean and they do so with a big layer of fat, big layer of blubber. Now as humans, we're pretty lucky living on land. We might not get cold quite as often as a whale could. That and we can also go get a jacket. So hair, air, maintain our own body temperature. Number four, mammals don't lay eggs. Well, the vast majority of mammals don't. So whales have to have their babies in the ocean. They don't lay an egg that will hatch into a whale. No, they have a live birth. And number five, we feed our young milk. So even in the ocean, young whales, their calves, have to drink milk. Absolutely. Now, those are our big five things that we have in common as mammals. 
And it's a good reminder of why we want to act just like the snail and protect something much bigger than us. Because these animals, even though they look really different, have a lot in common with human beings. But it doesn't just end there. It doesn't just end with those big five that we all have in common. There's more. Now, here we see a whale's mouth. They have a tongue just like us. They have two eyes just like us. And teeth. Hmm. Those, don't, those don't really look too much like our teeth. But this would be the kind of teeth that the gray blue humpback whale from our story has. They have something called, I hope you're excited for this, baleen. Yes. So this looks and feels really similar to a broom. And they have it hanging off the top of their mouth. And it helps them eat and catch their food. So this is what the outside of baleen looks like, and it feels just like a broom. And that's what the inside looks like, just like this. So when they scoop up their food, for humpback whales, they like to catch fish. So they'll open their huge mouth. And as they open it, it'll suck in all those fish. Sometimes they even get underneath a school of fish and just chomp. And with the fish in their mouth and teeth like this, they can't get out. Now this is from a gray whale, the kind of skeleton behind me. But humpback whales have something very similar. So I know this doesn't look very human. I said that it's something we have in common. This is made out of the same material as your fingernail and your hair. It's made out of keratin, not carrots, but keratin. And that's another thing we have in common. We have that in our bodies, something that we use. Now, one final big thing I want to show you that we have in common with whales is going to have to take a little bit of thinking and a little bit of creativity. I'm going to show you this front flipper of the whale. We're going to walk over there. And I want you to be looking for a part of the human body that looks a little similar to the bones in this front flipper. I hope you're ready. Okay, so the camera's going to jostle around a little bit. So if you want to close your eyes, I'll go ahead and tell you when we're done jostling around. Okay, we're moving, 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 moving. All right, we're done moving for anybody that needed to close their eyes. So here we go. We're going to pan on down. Now remember, you're looking for something similar. Something that looks like a human, part of a human body. So we'll go up again. And we'll go back down. Go ahead. I want you to use that raise hand button when you think of a part of the human body that has bones that look really similar to this. What looks similar or the same? Oh, man, this really is a smart group of cubs here. Now, if you were thinking a human hand or our feet, you're seeing the same thing that I am, absolutely. So these bones look so similar to a human hand. It's cool because we see even more similarities in an animal that's much bigger and seems a lot more different than us. But in reality, look at this. They have similar bone structures. They just use them in a different way. Let's look for some other bones that a whale has that we can find on our body too. So there's the skull. We've all got a noggin, that's why we wear helmets to protect ourselves. So here we go, we got our skull. Let's travel on down. We're gonna go all the way down this skeleton. What do we see 
on the top here. Yeah, that's going to be that spy, and we definitely have one of those. Otherwise, we'd just be a blob. Nice shoulder blade. If you reach behind your arm, just like this, you can feel yours too. We have ribs. If you feel your chest, you can feel your ribs to help protect our heart and our lungs and our stomach. And go all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way down. We're following that wonderful spine. Yeah. So we see so many similarities, even though they live in a different home and they're much, much bigger than we are, it's still important to help them because we have more similarities to this whale than even the snail in our story did. And the snail was able to help, even though she felt really small, she made a really big difference. So my challenge for you today, my junior ranger cubs, is to think about new ways that we can help animals around us, even if they're much bigger than we are, maybe even if they live far away from where we live, there's always ways that we can help just like the snail did. Just because sometimes we feel small doesn't mean we can't make a big difference. Now, thank you so much for joining this Junior Ranger Cub program. After this, please make sure to keep an eye out for that survey because that's how you're gonna get your badge for today. Now, thank you for visiting McCarricker State Park. I've had a wonderful time with you. Thank you for learning about the snail and the whale, and don't forget your homework. What can we do to make a big difference? Have a wonderful rest of your day, everyone. Let's do a final raise hands as a wave goodbye. All right, goodbye, everybody.